purpose of prohibition of things we spoke about earlier is that they protect us from things which are extremely harmful which are harmful to the society as a whole whether we're able to understand where the harm lies or not alcohol the harm is obvious the pig the harm is not so obvious the harm is not so obvious in the pig but we believe there is major harm not just a bit of harm but major harm in the pig otherwise Allah is not going to prohibit it he is not desirous of creating difficulties in life to keep us away from things which are beneficial no he prohibits the things which are harmful where the harm is widespread so when he prohibited the pig it's because there's real harm in it not just the trichinosis that we have discovered or the fact that the pig has a lot of fat and the body cannot break down pig fat though it can break down uh, cow fat and sheep fat and the others but the pig fat we don't have the enzymes to break it down to its lowest components so it re is redeposited in our system in our blood vessels and things like this and doctors recommend to stay from it if you have you know problems with clogging of the arteries all these type of things we can see all that but you know people can always say to you what if we raise a hygienic pig no trichinosis and a lean pig we don't feed him any you know stuff that's going to make him fat he's just bones and muscle are you going to eat him now no we still don't eat him yeah so those things we have found let us not assume that that is it no there is harm some of the scholars of the past pointed out that perhaps the harm had to do with the nature of the pig when we look at the animals that are prohibited to us to eat from eating we see that in general there are animals which are carnivores the carnivores the lion the tiger birds of prey that kill with the claw the hawk the eagle the osprey these they are prohibited to us alligators etc the sea is different animals which are sea animals because the shark is a predator also but we can eat it big fish eat small fish but we can eat them so the ruling concerning the sea is different from the ruling for the land animals right these are the land animals the birds these are the forbidden animals perhaps this has to do with the nature of these animals that their nature is a violent nature when you observe the cow and the sheep and the goats when they eat their vegetable matter hey chewing the cud you know this is just calm type animals but then if you have ever seen National Geographic where they're showing the tigers and the lions hunting the the animals and how they just get out there they tear this thing apart you know the claws and teeth and blood and you say wow very vicious you know not that they're deliberately thinking hey I'm gonna be vicious today <laughs> that's just how they are that's their nature to eat in that way and that's why you you read about cases every year every so often these movie actors you know they like to carry they like to get these exotic pets they buy a black panther or whatever and you see them walking down the street with their panther or whatever and then you read a newspaper he got clawed by his panther you know what he's playing with his panther one day he just rah, and just tears off half his arms why he had raised this panther from it was a little little kitten and all of a sudden the thing is because that is its nature no matter how much you try to domesticate it has this nature similarly for the lion tamers you know this is a very high prayed profession you know because the high point of the lion tamer show is when when he gets the lion up there and he opens up his jaw and he puts his head and everybody says whoa look at that boy <laughs> no way you get me doing one of those right and they do it but every year a lion decides to close his mouth and a lion tamer loses his head that's why they get good pay <laughs> you know they get danger pay here you know so 
This is the nature. And anybody who has observed the pig, go to a pig farm and observe the pig. Its nature is filthy. It just loves filth. You put him in a clean area, he will wallow in his own feces and yes, yes, that is the nature of the pig. However you try to keep him, he loves filth. So, as they say, you are what you eat. There's a famous German nutritionist, he started that statement, you know, you are what you eat. That's the bottom line. You're eating the pig. You're building yourself up with the pig, his enzymes, his protein, his, you know, genes. Your body's breaking it down and remaking itself. It is affecting you. It is affecting you. Allah knows. This could very well be the essence of it. Now some people say, hey, the pig. Why did Allah make the pig then? You know? And of course, Muslims, people who are raised as Muslims, who have lived lives as practicing Muslims, who have never eaten the pig, in their mind, the pig must be nasty tasting. Well, to be honest, I was raised a non-Muslim, and my parents used to cook up pork, and it tasted good. It didn't taste bad, it tasted nice. And that's why it's popular. So it's not about it being nasty tasting, no, no, not at all. So the people ask, well then why did Allah forbid it? You know, if we discount this other element, right, of you being what you eat and all the other things, right? We say, hey, observe the pig. The pig is a garbage disposal unit, a living one. You got garbage, filth, whatever, the pigs go, they clean it up for you. So, that's his job, that's his role. And you don't have to eat everything Allah made. Do we eat flies? You know, people could argue, why don't we eat the fly? <laughs> we don't have to eat the fly. He has a job, he does his job, he's very important. Some kids ask, why did Allah make the fly? It's so nasty. Well, the fly has an important role. If we didn't have flies that lay their eggs in, in animal matter, and then the maggots come out and chew it up and break it down. We would be up to our necks in, you know, carcasses and things like that. Because it won't break down without them. They play a major role in keeping our societies clean. They have a role. We don't go eating them. We don't have to eat them. We see what their job is. And common sense tells us we don't have to eat it. We don't eat it. Technically speaking, if you wanted to eat a fly, nobody could say it's haram. You realize that, right? I was just clarify that in case you wanted to people who eat flies, right? <laughs> I'm saying technically speaking, though I wouldn't want to eat it and I wouldn't recommend it. If you did choose to eat flies, it's halal. But we don't eat it. Okay? 